Welcome back to Mr. Pollock Biology and our series on respiration. Today is the second video on respiration and really the first part of proper respiration, glycolysis. This video is for AQA students studying the biology specification um, for A2 level biology unit 4. So let's have a look at today's objectives. We're going to understand the chemical reactions of glycolysis and we're going to identify the products of glycolysis. So let's get started. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm. We start off with one molecule of glucose, which is a six carbon sugar. Now, in unit one, you learned the structure of glucose and you learned that it was a ring structure. For the purposes of this video and this little animation, I'd like us to imagine that glucose as a single chain with six carbons in it. We don't need to worry about all the H's and OH's and CH2OH's kicking off around it. Just imagine it as a chain of six carbons. So, glucose is pretty unreactive. So our first step in glycolysis is to make it more reactive. And we do so by investing energy in the form of phosphate. So we use ATP to come on in and invest some energy. And the way it does this is it binds and attaches two phosphates onto either end of our glucose chain, thus phosphorylating the glucose, forming phosphorylated glucose. As a byproduct of this, we also get two molecules of ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Now, phosphorylated glucose, depending on who you ask, has got a couple of different names. Some people call it phosphorylated glucose. Some people call it activated glucose. Some people just call it 1,6-fructose bisphosphate, which is probably the most correct. But realistically, we can just think about it as phosphorylated glucose. If we think about it in that way, it also helps us to remember that glucose has had two phosphate groups added onto it, and it reminds us that that investment of phosphate has come from ATP. So this molecule that we've created is really, really unstable, and it doesn't hang around for very long. It splits, and when it splits, it forms two molecules of triose phosphate, which is just a three-carbon phosphorylated sugar. Again, this has got some other names, but we won't worry about those in too much detail, really, until we study the same molecule, but in photosynthesis, and then we can call it something else. But for the time being, hey, it's triose phosphate, and it's come about because phosphorylated glucose is really unstable and highly reactive and just splits. We're going to get a little bit more in-depth here. So triose phosphate undergoes an oxidation. And to oxidize it, we need a little bit of help from some coenzymes. And the coenzymes we're going to use is or is or are NAD. So NAD is a coenzyme, and the job of NAD is to come on in and pull away a hydrogen from each of these triose phosphates. And this removal of hydrogen means that triose phosphate has been oxidized. And this is a redox reaction, so if triose phosphate is being oxidized, that means that NADH has been reduced. And NAD, sorry, NAD in its reduced form is called NADH. We also have some protons as a result of this, and they'll come in handy later on when we look at the electron transport chain. So just remember that NADH and some protons are going to move across to the electron transport chain, and I'm, I promise you it all will become clear in a later video. So there we go, the coenzyme NAD has become reduced. Now you don't have to call it NADH, you can just call it reduced NAD, and that will prompt you to remember that this indeed has been reduced and therefore triose phosphate has been oxidized. So this also involves a little bit of energy production. So we get four ADP coming in and being phosphorylated, and that gives us some ATP profit because we initially invested two molecules of ATP and now all of a sudden we're getting four molecules back. It's not too important where the extra two molecules of ATP come from. It's pretty obvious that we're removing a phosphate from each of those triose phosphates but don't think too deeply about where the other phosphate comes from otherwise you'll start to get a little bit confused. So there's our profit of ATP and that leaves us with two molecules of the final product of glycolysis, which is pyruvate, or pyruvic acid, which is a three-carbon molecule. So there we go. That is the end product of glycolysis. So let's review the whole thing. 
We've got glucose, a six carbon sugar, being phosphorylated. And that involves the initial investment of two molecules of ATP. That phosphorylated glucose doesn't hang around for very long because it's so reactive, and it splits into two molecules of triose phosphate, each of which is three carbons in length. Triose phosphate is then oxidized, and NAD is reduced. Two molecules of ADP are phosphorylated, and we get two molecules of ATP for each triose phosphate that is changed into pyruvate. That means we have a total profit of two ATP. Because we initially invested two, we get four out, and therefore we've made a profit of two. So here are the products of glycolysis. We get four ATP, which again is a net profit of two. We get two molecules of pyruvate, that three carbon compound. And then finally, we get two molecules of NADH, which is sometimes called reduced NAD. So our next step is to look at the link reaction, which we'll do in another video. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe.